I'm Luke with SNS Diesel Motorsport, and we're getting ready to do about the worst thing you could do to a 2011 or newer diesel Ford Super Diddy. So we've got a 2016 F-250 here. This is the truck I drive about every day, and we're intentionally wrecking the CP4 high pressure fuel pump. And not that worried about it because we've got our Gen 2.1 disaster prevention kit installed, and uh, we know it works. We've tested it on the bench. We've wrecked pumps on the bench and, you know, proven it works, but the ultimate uh, will be to actually do it in the vehicle. <clears throat> so we're going to pull a trailer to UCC tomorrow with this truck, uh, with the pump failing, with a roller that we've intentionally taken out and ground a pocket in, damaged, and we're actually also going to install it 90 degrees from the cam so that it has no chance at living and uh, drive it about 80 miles north pull in our show trailer, leave it up there for the weekend, drag the trailer back next week, tear it apart, and uh, show that everything's fine. The pump itself is going to be failed, but the injectors, the rails, the return side, the tank, supply pump, everything will be uh, intact and healthy, and uh, we'll have it there at the show. Um, the return side filter that's going to be catching debris coming out of here, we expect there to be significant amount of metal debris in there, but everything that the expensive stuff that really counts, like the injectors and rails and rest of the high pressure components are gonna be protected. So that's our plan. Uh, it's a, a, little, a little risky, but we're not too worried about it. And the reason that is, is because <clears throat> this is what the CB4 pump looks like. Two lobe can, sits down in there. This is the roller that rides on that. We have intentionally damaged that, like I said, and it's gonna sit in there and actually also be turned 90 degrees so that it doesn't have any chance, and it's just gonna dig a groove right through there, making metal shrapnel, doing its best to just wreck the whole rest of the system like it was originally designed. Um, but we're gonna stop that, because the way this works, fuel comes from the filter into the bottom end of the pump first, comes through the bottom end of the pump, and then up through a passage in here to right there, to the metering unit in normal situation. It passes through the metering unit to the high pressure heads and then to your injectors. It's a ten, twelve thousand dollar repair bill when this fails. What our product does, this takes fuel straight from the filter, the cleanest filter in the cleanest fuel in the system. This blocks the flow that's trying to come from the bottom end of the pump. Metering unit bolts into the top of here. <clears throat> and it supplies the bottom end of the pump separately, completely separately. It goes back to the return, but you get just good clean fuel straight off the filter to the metering unit here, which is then the gatekeeper for the fuel going to the high pressure plungers and your injectors and the rest of the expensive parts. So the reason that this being the absolute worst thing you could possibly do to this truck is not worrisome now is because all that metal is gonna get generated right here it's going to come up to the bottom end of our bypass block. <clears throat> it's going to stop it there. And so that metal is going to get generated in here, not make it anywhere else past it, and go straight back out the return, headed back to the tank. Normally, your tank ends up full of metal too. Your supply pump eats it. Your fuel cooler eats it. But this is on the return side in the vehicle. So coming out of the pump, we're going to catch all that debris right here. When this pump is grenaded, which is going to be doing the whole way we're driving up and back, it's all going to be contained within about a foot and a half and uh, come Monday when we tear it back apart after the show after the races um, we should have just metal contained to this one small area and most likely the truck's still going to be running fine because with the bypass kit installed you're not damaging all the rest of the components that are what actually makes the truck stall and die so it'll actually run for a long time with this gen 2.1 uh, bypass kit disaster prevention kit installed so we're going to get back to it uh, Install this uh, damaged roller, wreck this pump, put a hurt on the truck, and we'll see you Monday. So one of the main things that any Ford Super Duty guy dreads is a failed high pressure pump that takes the truck down without you knowing it and uh, is a really expensive repair bill. We're going to do that in unintentionally on purpose. Damage this really critical roller, getting ready to install it now. There she goes. It's a bad day installed right there. Here's the actual pumping head. That roller compresses that spring as the cam goes around. Check to make sure I've got it turned 90 degrees, the absolute worst way it can possibly go on that cam.
That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we got the truck buttoned up last night. Uh, got a CB4 put back together with an intentionally damaged roller. It's gonna fail the pump for sure. And um, we're gonna fire it up, see how things go. Plan is to take our show trailer up to UCC with it. Fired it up last night briefly. It sounds pretty terrible. So I think we were successful at failing and uh, we're gonna see how far we can make it with it. <clears throat> you see how it sounds here. Got a couple new noises that it didn't have. Well, we made it here to the ultimate call out challenge with the Ford, with the intentionally damaged failed high pressure pump. Uh, the guys had a little bit of an adventure yesterday. We were towing the show trailer up to the races uh, with this truck after we had intentionally wrecked the pump, knowing that it was causing metal and uh, making a lot of debris and having a lot of issues. Sounded like hammered hell before we even left, but we kept on going anyways. Justin and the guys made it about probably 60 miles or so, and eventually the truck laid down in about the worst place, interchanged between 65 and 465, but it's not exciting if something like that doesn't happen. So, truck, low rail pressure, um, threw a reduced uh, power and died there on the side of the road. Um, we're able to get it restarted, unhooked the trailer, hooked to a different truck, and then one of the other guys limped it along uh, without a trailer. At least we're able to limp it here. Basically what's going on is, the pump's damaged enough that it's low output. So either the cam is wore down far enough that the lobes don't have as much lift, or we've got a one cylinder pump because the plunger's stuck up or something like that. Um, we'll tear it down, we get back to the shop and see exactly what happened. But basically it uh, is low output, so we can only do like light driving, uh, not towing the trailer anymore, but it made it intact. Uh, we're gonna cut the filter apart on the return side to show exactly what was going on and how much debris we were catching and the efficiency of the filter. Um, and then uh, we'll see how risky we want to be if we want to try to limp it back home or not with the uh, extra, extra wounded CB4. Um, but uh, it sounds absolutely terrible as we kind of expect, but there again, we're just going to show, we're going to damage this thing the worst we possibly can and show how well the, the bypass kit prevention kit works. So. I'll fire it up here, you can actually hear for yourself. All right, so we got the truck here. We took the return side filter off expecting lots of debris. The pump is failing miserably, uh, making lots of metal. And we found what we suspected, which is a lot of debris in the return filter and not debris on the clean side of the filter as it should be. Um, so the Gen 2.1 kit protects two different areas. It protects your injectors and rails and all the expensive parts via the bypass block on the pump. But when a pump fails normally, it sends lots of metal shrapnel back through your fuel cooler, back to the tank, back through your supply pump, and is a lot of extra expense and labor just because it's recirculating all that metal through the pump return. That's why this fuel return filter exists, is to catch all that really close to the pump so that you don't have much exposed uh, debris. So what we found here, we'll show you, basically we cut this filter apart so we can inspect what's in it. As you can see up here on the top, Lots of really, really small, fine metal debris. Um, inside of the filter here is the clean. Well, you can see the outside of the filter is just, this was a, a fairly new filter before we started. And uh, it's just full of really fine metal debris, really dark, really nasty. Look inside of the filter on the clean side. This is the important side, because this is the clean side that's heading back to your fuel cooler, back to the tank, back to the supply pump. Clean as can be, nice clean fuel on the inside. 
but the fuel that came out of this thing is actually what's in this water bottle right here. Nasty, very contaminated fuel. And then here's what's in the filter. So filter did a phenomenal job. Lots and lots of metal debris, really fine, hard to catch metal debris that would be really small micron. We've done lab testing to see what, what micron testing or what micron level the size of this particle is. So you know how small of a filter you actually need to have. But uh, so far, great success. The filter did exactly what it's supposed to and uh, showed that uh, keeps the dirty where the dirty is supposed to be and keeps the clean fuel going back to the tank and circulating back around to the rest of the system. So next step will be tearing the truck apart and seeing what we find when we get back to the shop. All right, we're wrapping up things here at the Ultimate Callout Challenge. It's uh, Sunday and we've got the old trusty Ford here with the very, very wounded high pressure pump. It's making all kinds of noise, but we're gonna try to go ahead and get it all the way back to the shop, about another 80 miles the other direction. Uh, and so we can get it tore, in, tore down first thing in the morning and see what we're working with as far as what kind of damage we got in the pump and then show what the uh, Gen 2.1 bypass kit does to protect the rest of the system. So wish us luck, hopefully it makes it, but it's definitely hurt. We'll fire it up and head out.